The most challenging part I feel is uh, being out here a long time on your own. Being out here alone is also one of the best parts about it because then it's just you, the wildlife, and uh, the amazing country around you. Usually start pretty slow. I've had a couple instances where I woke up and walk out of my trailer and there's wolves right, right out of the front door. My name's Jedediah O'Reilly. Um, I grew up on a farm in Buckeye and uh, we ranch cattle. It was a lot smaller than the operations out here, but I am very familiar with cattle. <laughs> My job is to get out, uh, locate the wolves, and haze them out of occupied pastures and away from cattle. So it's almost like a cattle babysitter. My name is Riley Young. I'm a range rider for Arizona Game and Fish. Uh, basically, I'm conflict mitigation between wolves and cattle. So the Arizona Game and Fish Department has always advocated for a balanced approach to Mexican wolf recovery that's balanced with the, the needs of those that make their livelihood and live on the landscape. I don't believe most ranchers are anti-wolf. What they're anti is the wolves killing their livestock. That's a demonstrable economic impact. There are programs to compensate ranchers for livestock killed by wolves and the Arizona Game and Fish Department does a lot to prevent depredations from happening. That includes hiring range riders to keep an eye on cattle. This is really a service that we can provide to the folks that are being affected by, by wolves, by the recovery program. Um, and if we are successful at reducing depredations, um, all of that goes towards advancing wolf recovery. The Mexican wolf was close to extinction in the late 1970s when the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service got to work on a captive breeding program and a recovery plan to save the endangered species. The reintroduction of Mexican wolves to their historic range in the White Mountains of Arizona started in 1998. Now, there are a lot of people that say, well, we don't need wolves, period, but the law says we will recover the Mexican wolf. And I think from a ethical standpoint, people that work for an organization like the Arizona Game and Fish Department feel that very strong ethical connection to restoring native fauna back to Arizona. I've had a couple opportunities where they were in a great area, not, not in a pasture or anything, and been able to just sit there and watch kind of the dynamics of the pack and really get a good look at them. It's really awesome. That static, that's the receiver going, and uh, I have an antenna on the top of my truck, and just kind of waiting to hear a beep. I definitely enjoy the static, because usually if I'm getting some kind of tone, it means there's wolves somewhere where they shouldn't be. The static's the music to my ears. Satellite radio callers deployed on at least one wolf in every pack is the key to locating and managing wolves. Those callers are what make or break us. Uh, I'm working for the department, but it's also working for the ranchers because you're out here protecting their cattle and keeping the wolves out. And by keeping them out, you're also saving them by getting less pressure on them for removal orders. So in turn, you're also saving the wolves. If wolves continue to depredate and we're not able to abate that depredation and stop the depredations, then one of the things that, that happens is removal of wolves from the landscape. And, and then that, that obviously is slowing the recovery efforts in that area. We're headed that way. Are they in cattle right now? Oh, uh, we got five wolves sitting on a, a carcass in, a, in the middle of a pasture full of cows. We need a haze them off of that carcass and get that carcass removed. A big part of it, the benefit of, of having the range riders is to have a rapid response through hazing um, using less than lethal rubber bullets, scare devices. One of the most effective is the cracker rounds which launch a projectile 
which has a delayed explosive in there. And you can actually get that up and pass them so they can uh, go in whatever direction you're trying to push them. The ultimate goal is get them away from cattle and uh, let them know that a human did it by getting a yell in there, getting some human presence felt. So they can um, kind of correlate humans and cattle are a no-go. Uh, we were hoping to get a little closer and then able to get some actual like cracker shells or some rubber rounds out towards the wolves. But uh, some houndsmen ended up rigging a bear and uh, kind of scared the wolves off. But we still got a human presence. One of the other things that our range riders will do is, uh, is help to move carcasses out of a depredation hotspot. That, that does help eliminate that attractant of wolves and other predators into that area. Yeah, we got a signal for a female in this pack out in this pasture. Go see if we could glass her up. Most rewarding to me is that you get to help conserve this federally endangered species and protect them for generations to come. But also you're improving the rancher's livelihood because every single cow is their paycheck. That's how they live. That's how they feed their families, put food on the table. I do take it kind of to heart that this is, this is their cattle. I wanna, I wanna protect them the best I can. Keeping the cattle alive and keeping the wolves going, I think is just a reward of itself.